I'm writing a paper on global warming in my environmental science class. So the first place I'm going to be looking for my information once this pops up, let's see, I'm going to go to Google. And the first thing I'm going to go to is I'm just going to search global warming and see what we get. Global warming facts, actually, let's go to that. Page is loading, but let's see what we get here. So we have. nature.org it seems to be a pretty credible site not too much on global warming let's see I would normally begin the research process by taking notes, getting, go ahead and seeing what my topic is completely about, because uh, so I want to have a good idea of uh, what I'm actually researching. Cookies on it? Is that? I, okay, I didn't know if it was popping. It's not popping up, so I'm not sure if it's. This. All right. So I chose this site, Ecologic.org, because I also felt it was more credible than using something like Wikipedia, of course. I would save this course because it's got some good information on global warming, something that I would like to use in the paper. Factual information. I usually keep up with my sources um, by going and adding them to the work cited kind of a rough work cited before I finish the paper but at least add the link on there then go back later let's go back So sometimes what I'll do if I can't find any good stuff on regular Google, I'll use Google Scholar. Let's go back and go ahead and look up global warming on Google Scholar. And here we have a link that says fingerprints of global warming on wild animals and plants. So we can click on that, see where it brings us. The site is on nature.com. Let's see what we got here. Looks pretty credible. We'll get the published date, everything. Publisher, whatnot. Let's see.
this is probably something I'd use too because it's also using factual information in the text so I'd probably add this to the works side and save it as well let's go back to Google Scholar Now I'm going to go ahead and type in Google Scholar. I'm going to say, why is global warming bad? All right, here's something that looks good. It says, so this link says, will changes in soil organic carbon act as a positive or negative feedback on global warming? I actually said no, I probably won't use that. That's climate perception so global warming. That could be good. That looks like something I would want to use. Public perceptions of global warming. Let's click on that. This is a site I probably would not use. Um, I couldn't find any publisher, publisher date or author, nothing. Um, nothing of it looked very credible. Nothing reliable. All right, here we go. So I went back to Google Scholar, and here's robust negative impacts of climate change on African agriculture. And this is on IOP.org, IOPScience.org. Once again, this is all factual information. It's got the all, two authors, they got their publisher, and this looks like a pretty credible site. A lot of factual stuff that I would probably use in here as well. So I'll go ahead and save this one too. And so to start, I usually probably start off with uh, three or four sources. So we'll go ahead and try and find one more. on a link. 
link. Let's we're on A M E T S O C dot org. And I've got a lot of authors on here. Um, under it's got their credentials, so it looks pretty credible. Um, let's see what we got here. PDF on the article. All right, Ace Medic Trends of Daily Maximum and Minimum Temperature. New perspective on recent global warming. <coughs> <coughs> going and scanning through uh, to look if this would be good or not for my paper or for research. So I'm just skimming through it a little bit. I like here how it's got all this information once you get all factual uh, graphs and evidence. So this looks like a source I would use as well. So I'd go and save that. And then once I get those four sources, I'll dig deeper into those four sources and get my information from there. Um, so that's. Uh, uh, as far as you want me to go today, or is that. Okay. I'm writing a paper on diversity issues for intro to criminal justice class. The first place I will search for my information is Google because it is the most common website that I use. I begin the research process by typing in genetic diversity because those are the main the key words in the paper that I'm writing. I scroll past Wikipedia because I don't think it's a credible source. Anybody can put anything on Wikipedia. I normally try to look for the web pages that end in org or .edu or .gov. They seem more accurate to me. I choose this link because it says the point tense of genetic diversity. And I'm leaving this site because this has to do with biology. So this is not what I need. I'm changing my word search. Genetic diversity and how it relates to criminal justice.
clicking on this website. The title of it is Database of Human Genetic Diversity Allows Identification. I'm changing my search terms because again this doesn't relate. I'm going to try Criminal justice, genetic diversity instead. I choose this link because it's the National Criminal Justice Reference Server and it provides a book that I can go get meaning that's probably nothing helpful on the website so it gives me a different choice source that may be helpful. So I'm opening up Word document because I would like to save the, this source because it's still helpful even if it's not giving me information I need yet it'll take me where I need to go. Okay, I'm choosing a different link in the title of it, The Role Genetic Information Plays in the Criminal Justice System, which is basically what I've been looking for. Because I like to think that it plays an important role because that's how like you stereotype and like different races are stereotyped from their background and who's more likely to commit crime. I'm just scrolling through here. I'm not going to read this yet because generally I like to get like three to four good sources before I start actually reading. Save this to the Word document so I can go back and view it later. The next place I'm going to look for information going back to Google.
I clicked on a link that says bioethics and genetic diversity from the perspective of UNESCO and non-governmental organizations. Not really sure what the acronym is for, but I'm skimming through here. And it looks like it might tie to criminal justice and genetic diversity, how it plays an important role. So I'm going to use it as a source too. If it doesn't work, just go back. Go in a Word document. Save my link. I don't like this title that says genetic diversity in important disparities. So I'm gonna click on this and scroll see scroll through. says genetic diversity sometimes can interact with social processes. I like this. And I think it will tie in nicely. So I'm gonna use it. Save another link to my Word document. have the sources that I want so and that's it I am writing a paper on Marfan syndrome for my biology class and specifically the genetics behind it Gonna start with Google. And the first website I'm going to use is marfan.org because it is the official website for the disorder and has the most up to date and reliable information. Most of the basic information being easy to find, I wouldn't copy and paste anything directly because it's easy to locate within the website. Um, and I would begin my research process by just reading through everything that's available because it's easy to access. <laughs> Given the nature and information available for Marfan syndrome, I wouldn't deviate too much from Marfan.org because a lot of it is unreliable. Um, I would 
use this website because it is .gov. It has somewhat more authority than Wikipedia. And it gives basic overviews and details into the genetics. Um, I think for a general paper, you wouldn't need more than these two to write about Marfan syndrome. If I were to use Wikipedia, I would use the sources Wikipedia cited. Rather than using it verbatim. So all of these reference sources could be used. And anything I found useful, I would copy and paste to a Word document and use as needed.